Hey there gamers, I am Pruitt, this is Jim Davis, and DMs, we know you're frustrated out there, trying to challenge your players, it's exhausting, you're drowning, it's, the air is being sucked out of the room, but I'll tell you what we're going to do, we're going to teach you how to fight dirty today, we're going to teach you how to DM dirty today on WebDM. This episode is sponsored by 1985 Games and their Dungeon Notes Kickstarter. Dungeon Notes empower DMs and players to keep easy track of their characters and the world around them in any 5th edition game. The Hero's Journal is for players to keep their characters and all the notes about the campaign. And for Dungeon Masters, they've got two. A campaign journal for prep and world building, and a session notebook to log what happens during gameplay and keep your monsters and NPCs at the ready. Plus, they've got dungeon sticky notes to keep track of everything from NPCs and locations to spell slots and hit points, all designed to help keep you organized and focused on having fun at the table. Don't miss out. Link in the description. All right, Jim, let's uh, let's give the DMs out there a little bit of help. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Because like we've discussed before about 5th edition, it can be a little difficult to quote-unquote kill characters and sometimes sure, yeah. people feel that it's a little safe and everything but i think that's i think that goes uh not solely on the dm but uh what the dms can do about this is just right. uh, i think maybe look at beyond the hit points yeah yeah taking it beyond the uh the hit points we're talking about uh presenting combat to characters or or you know the conflict uh that really uses the full might of the exception based rule design of fifth edition, like sort of the low hanging fruit of this would be like exhaustion or, or the drowning and suffocation rules to, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> to threaten, uh, characters with, and my mind goes to like looking at the entire character, all of it, the character sheet as it were, and yeah. considering that open game. In terms of how you uh, how you come at the uh, the characters, how you can fight dirty, and yeah. uh, and still hopefully present a, a combat that is exciting and interesting, uh, and maybe a little frustrating, but at least they'll have their characters at the end of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, in some form or fashion. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's jump into this. So uh, yeah, let's let's jump into getting get get let's get dirty with it. First let's off, it. let's let's talk about one thing. Yeah, everybody loves them proficiencies it's a yes. unified mechanic that was introduced uh however many editions ago but it, it was solidified in fifth edition fifth edition where yeah, everybody's certainly. the same but yeah. attacking proficiencies what would it like jim if you were a thief and you were picking a lock and you screw it up and you get stabbed by a needle and get poisoned and all of a sudden now you can't remember how to pick locks and you right. took expertise in picking certainly locks did. But yeah. you now like a poison that that attacks your proficiencies and take those away because uh, you yeah. can't think clearly or or whatever. Like I mean, again, whatever this it is, is magic. Yeah. Um, you do whatever you want, right? I no, I, I I I love this idea of someone who has developed a poison specifically to deter lock picks. You know, people who would who yeah. would uh, try to pick locks, right? And and like that. That's a really cool example of why you would attack the proficiency in the first place, you know, like whether it's a curse, whether it's a, a poison, whether it's a special attack, whatever, like telling a player like, yeah, you don't know how to use that weapon anymore. Like you failed that save, right? You failed your charisma save, your whatever. You, yeah, you don't know how to use that weapon anymore. Um, or yeah, you got hit with this uh, mind affecting attack and and, you know, you you don't have access to these skill proficiencies anymore. They took your knowledge. They took arcana and history and whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. those are things that you can, uh, you know, that you can hit the player with because it just, it makes life difficult, right? Like it doesn't say, no, you can't do anything. Although it might in very, you know, in some circumstances, but like you can still attempt these things. You just don't have your proficiency. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's, I, really like that as a first kind of like step towards thinking uh, about attacking the entire character and not just their hit points. <laughs> you take proficiency away. Uh, yeah, it really sucks for all those those uh, rogues, those bards that have expertise and whatever. But, you know, if you're a fighter and you still got a high strength, like you can still swing that sword. Sure. You're just not swinging it as well. 
You don't remember right. the particulars of slipping that sword between armor or whatever. Right. You still can hack away, but it's give it a it's shot. A, yeah, yeah. It's it's it. To me, it's a. It's not as that's not as bad as say giving disadvantage, like a level of exhaustion. Having disadvantage sure. on something isn't nearly as terrible as oh, for some reason I just can't remember my. My my sword caught us. I can't remember what's <laughs> right. going on. You know, I don't know how to use um, this thing. Yeah, yeah. I I, I mean, especially at lower levels. Uh, you know, your your bonus is probably gonna. Uh, you know, from your ability scores is probably gonna outweigh your proficiency bonus. Your proficiency bo- your proficiency bonus isn't yet like in the range that it starts to equal. You know, that's equal to or on par with the bonus you would get from advantage. So it is a nice way of saying like, no, they're coming at you. This is something a complication that you've introduced to just throw mm-hmm. things off a bit and rather than use the like minus one minus two the little sort of fiddly penalties that you might get uh from other debuff type effects like this is just a kind of a cleaner way you know what your proficiency bonus is you have the other half right of your whatever your total bonus is already there so instead of looking at your whole skill score you know you just look at the ability score that's it Easy to remember, mm-hmm. right? You don't have to do any other refactoring uh, of anything on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, some some things to consider with it, like I'm not sure I'd use language a lot. I think there's there's a case to be made for like taking away language proficiencies, and depending on the party I was playing with or DMing mm-hmm. for, like taking away their ability to communicate with each other using language might be fun, or it might be very frustrating. Uh, and mm-hmm. so I, you know gauge that according to what I was DMing for. But I might also just take away proficiency bonus, period. Just be like, something is blocking this. Something, you know, some something is, mm-hmm. you know, you don't get it to your weapon attacks. You don't get it to your, uh, you know, your saving throw bonuses or your saving throw DCs or your spell attacks or whatever. Um, you know, you don't get your... <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned a second ago, like, you don't get your saving throw bonus. I took away your constitution save. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's the that's how deadly this disease is. It, like, undermines the, you know, your very ability to, to like, resist it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love proficiency as a first stop on a how to, how to really think about coming up with things yeah, to yeah. affect the characters. Very fun. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, and uh, if you want to think about proficiency and getting better at role-playing, you need to check us out over on Patreon, uh, where you get four podcasts a month uh, for, like, five bucks. So it's a lot more uh, more learning to be learned. Uh, so, you know, check that out if you want. Um, so let's move to the second one here, Jim. I, uh, yeah. Even though 5th uh, Edition doesn't have, like, alignment per se it's not as big of a deal mm. as it's been in, in right. the past they did uh they do have the the i the um ideals bonds flaws uh traits which yeah. is kind of a more grayer you know kind of specific but you know it's it's a little rp fuel but there's Certainly. nothing wrong with 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 messing with those and not just in the oh my bond is my sister that i protect and just killing her sure. like no no no, no right no. right what if you gave about yourself, what, if, so, what if an enemy gave you a new bond that conflicted yeah. with your original one? What if it did? What if it did? What if the enemy gives you a bond to protect it? Right now, it's like ideals, bonds, and flaws are are. I, I really like them. I think they're one of the better introductions of of stats to fifth edition. The fact they're kind of coupled with background, love it. So to me, they're integral to fifth edition, and the fact that more is done with ideals bonds and flaws and it's pretty much just left to this forgotten corner of of the game system where inspiration and it hang out it's fine you know like i like to have games where they change over time where my characters bonds ideals and flaws change over time where the dm suggests changes to them and having enemies that can change them or effects that can change them for instance so like as an example i had a uh, a kraken <laughs> in one of my games who is capable of inflicting moral wounds that when someone went toe to toe with them in combat, the physical, you know, like being physically struck by this Kraken's uh, tentacles, claws and the like, like gave flaws. It made a person more paranoid. It, it, it encouraged them to like hoard secrets, but also spread gossip. Like it just Mm -hmm. encouraged all this sort of bad behavior that then leads to a conflict that has to be resolved. And like, how do you cure a moral wound? How do you, how do, how do I heal my flaw? <laughs> right? Like it, it requires the DM to like 
think up what happens, what this means, how these things get changed. I had a charisma save for them uh, to resist uh, having a new flaw imposed um, and treated it like a curse uh, in terms of how to, to remove it. Uh, but to me, it, it like it opened up the door to a lot of interesting role playing possibilities that come out of fighting creatures that could change you when you fight them. Demons ought mm -hmm. to leave scars on you, right? Like it, it ought to be terrifying to fight some of these aberrations. I don't think it's inappropriate to say like, yeah, you get new flaws whenever you fight them. Like did you get taken out by a mind blast from a mind flare. Like <laughs> that leaves a mark. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, a little cut uh, in the morning. Right, right. Um, and you were mentioning alignment, uh, you know, mm -hmm. with this is that the ideals and bonds can reflect what other editions tried to do with alignment, with forced alignment change, right? Like other editions tried to say, like, it's a bad thing that you went from neutral good to neutral evil, but it was ham fisted and the advice for it was terrible. And, and it was presented in this very punitive and, and, you know, unengaging way. Whereas if you changed bonds and flaws and ideals, like you can introduce something like an alignment change, right? Someone's radically different than they used to be. They have different beliefs now. They, they value something different without putting like a straight jacket on it. And you can work with a player to, to encourage them to lean into this thing. Or if they don't want to lean into it, that's okay. It, but it is a fact about them, right? Like it, Mm -hmm. It is a fact about their character that will come up that if they want healed, they'd have to, to seek out changed. Really, I really feel like it's not explored enough yet. All the things we can do with ideal spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You shouldn't just keep those two uh, ribbon abilities. It's not it's not just there to dress up the present. Like it's it's, <laughs> part, of <their> <laughs> it's part of they're part of your character. Yeah, they're part of yeah, your character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, this is this next one is one that I, I, I love doing. I, one of the monsters I designed, but not your hit points, but your hit die. Like yeah. that, that pool of refreshing healing energy for your short and long rests that, that lets you get over all those wounds, whatever they, you, however you see them. But like mm -hmm. attacking your hit die. Like I had a, yeah. a monster I designed that it, when they hit you, it would, it would give you like fractures in your bones. Mm -hmm. And it would, nice. and if you failed your save, you would get, take hit die damage. And that represented, it took, it just takes longer for you to heal. Cause if you think about that, like, that's all that means is, uh, you know, yeah. you, you, you have some, you have some problems with the infrastructure uh, and you gotta mm -hmm. be a little more, you be a little more timid for a few days, you know, like I just had a spill and hurt my wrist and I'm a little bit more whatever <laughs> with my wrist for a few days, got a little bit less but, in you. <laughs> yeah. I got a little less in me cause my hit die were hurt and I can't replenish it. And so, uh -huh. uh, I don't know what, what get up. Expound I think on you're right that, on Jim Davis. I think you're right on track. I think conceiving of hit dice as like the actual health of your character, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 of of, of long-term injury being reflective in how quickly you regain hit dice, how how many you regain. Uh, and and the one as an aside for all of this show, these are also really interesting ways if you take the reverse of to reward your players in ways they might not expect. But we're not doing that show right now. Uh, you know, you might say it takes double the amount of time to regain hit dice when you have a serious lingering injury, right? Or, you know, you might say that you can never recover more than X number of hit dice because until this other thing is cured, you'll never be at full, right? You can never have more than half your hit dice at any one time. Right. And when we think of like the divide between hit dice and hit points, whereas hit points are more nebulous, like luck and fatigue and all other kinds of things, you know, flesh wounds and like, like your hit dice are a bit more concrete, right? Like you get a certain number of them back every day. You can spin them. They represent something more core to you, you know? And, and I also like using them as a resource, right? Like I like having them there to represent not just more serious injury, but like using them as a tax as like, you could get out of this thing, but you're going to have to spend a hit dice. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you, you know, they, they couple well with say environmental hazards and the like, where it's like, okay, you're going to have to trek across this really desolate stretch of, of terrain, for, you know, or this, this violent uh, weather phenomenon or magical event that, that we want to have a cost just to it. Right. And so I'm going to, what this cost is hit dice, right? How many do you mm -hmm. want to wager? You know, do you just want to get this over with, or do you want to risk a die roll? 
like there's a lot of things you can do when you put hit dice on the table as a resource to both like threaten mm -hmm. and manage and and like manipulate um i yeah uh, i'm i'm well, digging this what about one, you know what about uh if you're a player uh, and your dm says to you you know you cross this this arid expanse uh desert whatever it is and uh at the end of it uh what would you what do you want what do you want you want a level of exhaustion or subtract two hit die or three hit die sure as you sure. get to the end of your adventure you know one right. hey you're better off right now but you're not going to be able to heal as well versus all right i can fully heal but i'm i'm just i'm off you know i'm just yeah <laughs> that's it yeah that's that. a really good that's a really good choice to put to a player you know it gives them you like you one of the it, you this is going to suck, right? This, this is going to suck, but I'm going to give it to you how, in what ways you want it to suck, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, it, I think it really drives home sort of both how dangerous the environment can be, but also like gives the player a choice in the matter to say like, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I really just don't want to have to worry about disadvantage on everything, please. <laughs> like, I'll take, yeah. I'll take having reduced it die. Another yeah. way to sort of ah, just a tax. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say another way to sort of manipulate hit dice without being overly punitive is to say like something happens when you spend one, you know, that, that, you know, something maybe undesirable, um, could be that it advances something in you. Like if you're cursed or have an infestation or something like the, mm -hmm. that, that gets worse whenever you spend a hit dice. So you don't have to, if you've got people around to heal you, stuff like that, you're going to be okay. But at some point, um, if you ever spend one, this ticking clock just ticks one more down until it's going to get <laughs> <Yes>. you. <laughs> Five minutes to midnight. Um, right. <laughs> all right. Wait. Spell slots, Jim Davis. Like, this is something that uh, uh, I can already hear all of our, our caster allies just crying foul. Don't attack but, my spell slots, please. <laughs> but... It is a reserve of magical energy, and there are th creatures out there that that crave magical energy. Yeah. Uh, so, so what do you, what do you think? I think it's perfectly appropriate to have arcane creatures that like do spell slot damage. Like this takes mm -hmm. your lowest one, your highest one. You know, um, I <laughs> I think that's just the beginning of what you can do. Yeah. I think there are curses that like take over your spell slots. Like, imagine a cursed spell that once it gets in your character's mind or how you know however you conceive of them preparing their magic it just takes over it's like it would you know nope you have this one already it will no, no matter what else you have prepared you you, you can't cast them right <laughs> you know the consequence of this effect is that it's this one spell and like it wants to get it it wants to affect every spell caster around you the casting of it exposes them to uh mm. you know to infection as well like those are the kinds of deterrents i imagine a highly magical civilization cooking up for themselves right when i think of like the ancient magical empires that that are in these D, &D worlds i think of them having magic that's like yeah we can mess with your ability to cast magic you know like i i have a you know a, a dispel magic that not just dispels magic on you but it takes your spells from you right like it 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 steals your magic <laughs> that's what my magic does <laughs> um or it like loads your spell casting slots up with just dead weight so that you know i can imagine like an offensive spell that if the enemy caster the, the, the one targeted fails their save it like they have to spin their spells on just junk magic you know they 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 replace all your spells prepared with just terrible ones you know just what mm -hmm. you don't sky right purify like food that, and water you know? <laughs> purify food and water yeah <laughs> the spells yeah. you don't or, need or or uh if you can if you you know if you're fourth level and you have second level spot slots you have to upcast yeah um, you have to yeah you always have to cast it if, it if it has the ability you have to upcast it even if you don't want yeah. to well, i only got that one yeah. second level slot that i wanted to cast blindness deafness yeah, yeah, nope yeah. No. Nope, you cast bless. <laughs> <laughs> you cast, yeah, you cast second bless, bless on four people. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I making them pay more for a spell, right? Like, yeah, you can cast whatever spell you want. It's just going to cost you extra, right? It's going to cost you either an extra that level or, you know, one lower or one higher. Um, 
you know, you could even do it like it just costs you X number of spell levels. And then you pick from all the spells you have. Cost you seven spell levels. You could do a five and a two, three and a four, whatever, you know. And um, I think that, think you know, like <laughs> being willing to <laughs> come at a caster that way can really highlight like a a villain or a monster that is that's out there to get casters, right? Like why wouldn't they have these, uh, you know, the means to completely shut down a magic user from their source of magic? Um, and in that line of thought, I start thinking of things like changing the relationship of of the conditions of casting the components you need verbal somatic mm -hmm. material a focus like those are also things that you can manipulate and like if you're cursed to you cannot hold your spell focus then that kind of is a big big uh, wet blanket on your ability to cast magic <laughs> mm -hmm. you better go find those material components <laughs> right <laughs> Um, yeah, it's like uh, like in video games where you get to play the first level as a far more advanced thing, and then when you start the real game, you have to yeah. actually. So you start you start with your with your arcane focus that gets taken right. away for a while. So now you're out there scrounging in the in the dirt looking for grubs <laughs> and and whatever for material components for a bit till you get this thing removed. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, does it have to stop with spell slots? Like, Certainly. there are yeah. other abilities that characters can do, and you can just kind of extrapolate and expand it to other, you know, yeah. whether it's key, you know, if you're talking about key points for a monk, like having a blockage of your of your of your key. Um, yep. That's that can't spend them. Hell, takes more. Whole, spend there's a whole couple yep. episodes about Avatar about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Getting right. That's perfectly flow. appropriate. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go fight that barbarian. We better bring our ultra calming psychic, you know, telepath to keep that barbarian on lockdown. All right, barbarian, you failed your charisma save. It's gonna take you all your rage to rage this once. It takes you all your uses of rage for this next one. You know, like mm -hmm. those are the sorts of uh, ways that you can use those per, you know, per rest abilities that uh, characters other than spellcasters have. <clears throat> and you mentioned uh, arcane foci. So yeah. uh, that's not the only piece of equipment that characters have on them. And it's it's okay to remember that uh, they have a whole lot of stuff in their packs uh, on their person that if a villain knows that they're there, like this is when you go after it. You know, if, if, right. if you see, a, you see a, a character over there chugging a bunch of potions, like why wouldn't you hit them with the shatter? I would. Yeah. I've done it. Sure. Who knows what's on there? Yeah. Who knows what they got? That person in robes, yeah, I'm gonna hit him with, you know, with a glass breaking spell. Yeah, um, spell that's gonna set their book on fire. And uh, I, mm -hmm. to me, this is the big. To me, this is the big one. I can see players putting up with a lot of stuff, right? I have, in my experience, I have found that like there's something about the gear and equipment that a character has that's especially important to to a lot of players. Now, I'm not sure. Just I don't mean just magic items, right? But like it's sort of a resource that players treat as is just sort of like, okay, I, I have this on my person somewhere, you know, but it's not necessarily like embodied in the game. And for me, attacking the inventory of treating that as a resource to, to tax and to draw from and to present losses to as part of challenge makes it real, right? It, it takes the inventory out of this weird hammer space of it's on a big list on my character sheet and I have it when I need it, but I'm not really thinking about how I'm carrying all this in a fight kind of thing and says like, well, yeah, do you really have this? Do you really have food? Right? Like did, when was the last time you checked? Cause you've been in the trackless wilderness for ages and have you checked to make sure it's not maggot infested and you know, like mm -hmm. that something didn't happen when you were in that swamp, something didn't happen to your water, you know? Um, yeah gear fetid and brackish <laughs> right right gear and and like sort of damage to gear is a great way to portray an environmental hazard and to present sort of a cost to the to the characters that's not like hit points and exhaustion levels and things like that it's like ropes get lost uh lock picks break um you know weapons get dinged up shields get crushed all kinds of things can happen to gear that um it, you know would makes sense for what's going on in the game but like i i think there's a reticence to take things take material possessions away uh, uh from the characters 
Um, but I look at the game like D&D and I go, there's a reason rust monsters exist. <laughs> there's a reason mm-hmm. that things can take, that can like destroy your magic items and, and take those things away as well. You know? Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, as, as DMs go through their games, like there's a certain way to do it. Yeah. Without overdoing it. You don't maybe Certainly. just pour a bunch of black pudding on one of your characters because <laughs> you want to take one item away. You felt like you made a mistake, that... and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It, it's worth noting, especially when it comes to gear, like how how much control the, the players have in in getting magic items, right? Like if you run a mm-hmm. game where the players are very like driven and can go places and they can hunt down rumors of items and pursue those, then I have no problem taking them away. Right, because they earned it, they can work for it. There's others out there if they want to make up the loss for it. If it's in a game where it's like treasures parceled out at at certain intervals, and you sort of like check these boxes, okay, by this level you have this and things like that, or or even into the like the players will tell you what they want and ex- with the expectation that you work it into the game. I'm not gonna mess around as much with magic items, but that doesn't mean I can't take them temporarily, make it a hassle to. Uh, um, you know, to access them, make you spend two attunement slots to get <laughs> to get attunement for something, or introduce a kind of oh, cost to using it, right? Especially if it's temporary, right? If it's just a mm-hmm. temporary thing, um, then you know that's just a that's just a good night of gaming. Come on. <laughs> yeah. What What about a plus one sword that's cursed that it takes all of your attunement slots? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, something, and that's okay. So I'm glad you mentioned cursed items because normally in Dungeons and Dragons, a cursed item is just a drag. It's a minus to hit. It's a penalty to hit, right? Mm -hmm. That's boring. That is not interesting. That's a passive thing that happens to a character and not something the player can engage with on an active basis. What if instead an item gave you a flaw or a bond or it messed with any of these other things that we have been talking about today, but it could also just come with something else right like those art minor detriments for artifacts is a good table to look for for inspiration you stink mm-hmm. you have a weird shadow yeah. you know things like that <laughs> shadow's <laughs> always going the wrong direction uh, right right um but uh to kind of stick with uh equipment like here i i i want to loop back a bit to like the taking away of gear and the damaging of it because i do think that there's a certain expectation that players have that like, okay, I'm a fighter. I will have weapons to fight with. I am a caster. I will have the means to cast my spells. And I think if you like systemically and habitually, like constantly take those things away, then the players are justified in in calling foul on that. But the occasional Mm -hmm. rust monster, the occasional ooze that eats through something, the occasional thief who takes a, you know, magic item when you're not looking for it, I think is, is perfectly fine. And a way to like show danger, show that show that you know there's a threat without like threatening the life of your characters um Mm -hmm. but there's like a a little bit of another aspect to gear and inventory that you can also use that if you're featuring encumbrance if you're tracking what the characters are, are carrying and how much of it and where it's stowed that the more real you make those things the more they become avenues to come at the players they can't carry as much anymore because you've weakened them or you give them a piece of treasure that's like huge and inconvenient but really valuable <laughs> that's that's a that's a fun complication i think for dms like yeah though this thing is awesome but it's like the size of a master bed you know <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's tough to move around <laughs> yeah it's it's bigger than tensor's disc could handle you know <laughs> right but, certainly uh... <laughs> You're gonna need. You got two. You got a fighter and a barbarian. Y'all can move it around. <laughs> right. Yeah. You need two Goliaths in the party to uh, to, to carry <laughs> that thing, right? <laughs> oh, and man. this, to me, this is a reason why you track things like encumbrance. It's a reason why you bother to like to, f- to figure out where on your person is is all this stuff. Like, there's a reason to track the rations and the torches and the ropes and the iron spikes and all of that is because it lends a weight and a reality to the game that, that I find enhances the game. And then it also leaves another way open for the DM to mess with my character. That isn't my character ended up dying, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, I kind of like that. Uh, I like to see more of it, you know? 
Yeah, well, hey, I, 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 I do too. Uh, and if you want to see more of us, uh, go ahead and make sure to click like, uh, subscribe to the channel, give us a comment down there, tell us what you think about the shows. Uh, also, hit that bell so you get notifications. Uh, and if you want to follow us out in the rest of the social media world, hit us up on either Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we're all over the place. Take it easy and roll well.